everyone, we're here at the SPC at our new premises. See over here, we have this big events park. This events park is something that we're really excited about because in the past, we never had the space to actually hold big events like World Animal Day. Maybe once a month, we'll be setting up a tentage here and having activities and inviting members of the public to come to the premises to support our cause. Over on this side here, we have the donors wall. The donors wall is very important because we couldn't have done this without the support of a lot of people. And it's not about just donations, but donations in kind as well. We're going to be filling up this donors wall. I think it's going to look very nice because there's going to be different colour schemes to it. And once this wall is filled up, you know, it's going to look really cool. area is another very important aspect of uh, the SPC is the education centre. Basically members of the public you know will all congregate here. What we hope to develop in this area is education initiatives so exhibition boards you know activities that will encourage people to learn more about animal welfare and how to treat them better. I can show you a picture of myself when <laughs> when I was the education officer, you know, where I was dealing with some kids and exposing them to the wonders of animals. Over here what we have is the education pavilion. It's sort of an extension of the education centre that you saw in the front. As you can see, it's a really, really big area, so there's a lot of potential here. We'll probably be hosting uh, birthday parties for, for kids as well as pets. They like a natural environment rather than a concrete environment and I think this has a very natural setting. A lot of staff are mentioning that it's very calming, you know, so to see the water and to hear the water. Over here now, we have our merchandise store. Through our sale of our merchandise items, okay, we raise a lot of money for the animals, you know, which is very important for our work. I know that there are quite a few people who say, oh, can we buy pet food for my pet dog, you know, because they want to, of course, feed their animals, but at the same time support the cause, and I think there'll be a lot of scope for that. Now we're, we're headed into the adoption area, okay? I think this is the part that everybody loves. The ones that, that are in the yellow books, they're our volunteers, and we're very lucky to have that kind of support. They give up their weekends to help the animals. What we have here are our, uh, our kittens. Come here, come, here. come say hi to everyone. These animals, they, they can't actually come from the street. When people find these animals, they bring them in and what we do is we put them up for adoption. We encourage people to adopt rather than to buy because when we have more space as well, we can save more animals and that's what we want to do. Over here, we have our rabbit run area. I know a lot of people think that rabbits usually just sit in cages and they're happy that way, but it's far from it. They love open spaces and something that rabbits love to do is uh, when they're very happy is are binkies, you know, where they literally will just jump into the air just out of pure excitement and happiness. So we hope that this area will achieve that, you know, and bring out all their happiness and their joy. A lot of kids love rabbits, they have a natural predisposition for them. But when I ask them, how do you carry rabbits? By their ears! I say, no, no, you never carry them by their ears. How you should always carry them is by supporting the chest and their bottom. Okay, bear in mind that they have very heavy bottoms, yeah? And then pull it close to your body. They like to feel that security. This is our catchery area. Also one of my favourite parts at the SPCA because the cats are all free roaming. What we have here are the adult cats. This tabby over here. Wait, can what's the name of this tabby? Titan. Titan. Okay, there is a reason why we called it Titan because as you can see, he's quite big size, yeah? If you look at the ear, it has been tipped, yeah? So most likely it was a stray that was picked up and brought in. This is Lucius. I always call him the Tauke of the Catri because everybody respects him. He pretty much likes to be by himself and mind his own business. But I think he'd be great for a family that wants a cat that's very independent. Over here is the adoption area for the dogs, yeah? As you can see, it's a real hub of activity. We have members of the public that have come over to visit our new premises. 
Dogs like um, Tumba will probably find homes very quickly here yeah, because uh, a lot of people like toy breeds. They're smaller, they're easier to take care of. So that's why I do appeal to people, you know, if you can consider adopting one of the bigger dogs, they're the ones that really need homes. What I'd like to do is to show you one of our Singapore specials. They're called the mongrels, the crossbreeds, and I think they're kind of like a breed that people don't often look at, but we think that they're really wonderful. Hi Lars. As you can see, Lars is not a very big sized dog. I like his slim frame, it looks very whippet like. He's just so excited to see people. That's it? Very good. If you take them for obedience training and all that, they learn very, very fast. I can appreciate the fact that some people say they think it's too be so they can't adopt dogs like this. And we understand that. Having said that, there's actually a scheme, you know, that's been around for a few years already. A project adore and basically what that allows you to do is to adopt a crossbreed okay in HDB so we've actually got a few dogs here identified for project adore about four of them yeah so there's dogs like this okay this suit the criteria in terms of personality the size and the weight you know and you can consider dogs like that once an animal has been selected for adoption, it will remain here until it finds a home. There's no time limit on that stay. I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there that, you know, if an animal is not adopted within a month, that it will be put to sleep, you know, but it's not true at all, okay? I'll say that once and for all. They will remain here until they find a home. Ida is a 10-year-old, two-month Singapore special, and Ida has been here for a long time. The staff and volunteers really love Ida very much, and I think he's, she's kind of become a permanent resident here, and uh, kind of like our mascot. Hi Ida, come here. Hi sweetheart. Okay, you can see Ida is a very beautiful dog, and what I love about Ida, if you look at the eyes, yeah, she's got like a still um, eyeliner at the bottom. It's a very easygoing dog, and uh, so once again, if you're interested in adopting a dog, you know, please do consider Ida because Ida, I think, will make an amazing pet. I think very important when people want to adopt an animal that they actually get an opportunity to interact with the animal outside of its cage area. So. Um, this is what we call the socialization and interaction area. So the owners can actually, you know, um, interact with the dogs here, you know, and get to know them. Because I always think that the animals are a different animal in their cages and when they are outside of their cages, yeah. They're much more relaxed when they're usually outside. Our dog run area it occupies this whole space, which is awesome, you know. And here we have Dobie going for his little walk. The dogs, you know, uh, really enjoy good exercise, and this new setup allows us to give them that. This is one of our dog mentors. She does excellent work for the dogs, and they're the ones that actually bring out the best in the animals and, and uh, make them much more adoptable to members of the public. Another important uh, aspect of our work is rescue work here yeah? and this is one of our vans that goes out to rescue animals. We actually have a 24-hour emergency service for sick, injured and very young animals. So an example, 2 a.m. in the morning, you come across a dog that's been knocked down, it's still alive, you can call the SPCA and what will happen is we will dispatch one of our animal rescue officers and we have one animal rescue officer here, Daniel who's just gone to the rescue of a little Shih Tzu. Uh, it was probably a lost dog and uh, we'll hopefully we'll be able to find its owner uh, soon. So this is our consult room in the clinic and uh, we have our doctor here uh, taking a look at and examining this rabbit that has just come in. So a lot of the animals that we take in, okay, this is probably their first port of call. This is a dwarf rabbit, that's why it's so adorable and small and it's called Sammy and uh, unfortunately um, Sammy was found abandoned in a carrier at Block 
29 McLantern Road, yeah. Unfortunately, these sort of things happen where people, you know, when they don't want their pets, they actually just dump them there. And really, that's the wrong thing to do. And uh, they should do the responsible thing by finding it a home, especially since Sammy is such an adorable rabbit. She, if the owner just made the effort to do so, they were able to have even more problems finding it a home. We actually have a rehoming board on our website, yeah, that people can utilize, you know, and we usually get it up within a day. And for animals like Sammy, really, if the owner just made an effort, no problems finding it at home. And just to advise everybody that abandonment of animals in Singapore is actually against the law. So you're actually caught abandoning the rabbit, you know, in a void deck, and someone actually spots you, and you can be caught under this law, yeah? So please don't do that, yeah? Do the responsible thing and find it another home.